Cancellations. It happens to everything and everyone. It doesn't matter if you're Mario, doesn't matter if you're Zelda, and especially, it doesn't matter if you're Star Fox. Cancellations are inevitable and are everywhere. Recently, we actually spoke on this very topic, as we took a look at both the cancelled and failed Star Fox projects. However, what I did not know is once I made that video, I opened up a far larger can of worms than I was expecting, and not only did I stumble across more projects, both weird and obscure, while also finding out about more projects through fans that I didn't even know freaking existed. And that's what today is about. So, get ready to sit back, relax, and set them G diffusers to max, because it's time for us to dive straight into the failed and cancelled projects of Star Fox, part 2. Without further ado, let's begin. I highly recommend you go and watch the first part of the failed and cancelled Star Fox games. If you already have seen the first part, then you already know how things roll, so I won't waste any time and get right into the first game. Star Fox Remastered. Star Fox Remaster was actually a game that was going to be created for the 3DS that was going to remaster the one and only true classic, Star Fox, on SNES. The 3DS was home to one of the most well-known remakes ever, Star Fox 64 3D. However, we almost got a whole other Star Fox game remade on the system, the original Star Fox on SNES. Now, during a Reddit AMA, Dylan Cuthbert actually discussed a 3DS remake on the original SNES Star Fox that Q Games pitched to Nintendo. This is what he said during the AMA. We did an old school remake demo like this for the original Star Fox for the 3DS back after we did the remake of Star Fox 64 and showed it to Nintendo, but they weren't interested, unfortunately. Honestly, though, it makes sense. Though seeing Star Fox Remastered would have been super cool, and this lovable little gem definitely deserves a little bit of upkeep, it does totally make sense, as technically we did get a remake of Star Fox 1. That was Star Fox 64, and then we got it again with Star Fox Zero. Though it's not a true one-to-one -one remake, and that would honestly be amazing to see. Star Fox 1 is a bona fide classic with tons of great bosses, levels, and more, and it kicked off the entire franchise. And the original, above all else, definitely deserves deserve some serious love to be brought into the modern day. And the fact of the matter is, is that there was actually a demo created showcasing this very remake on 3DS, which means out there right now is a demo of Star Fox Remastered. Will we ever get to see it? Probably not, but thankfully we do have fans to give us a glimpse into what a remake could be like, a la Star Fox EX. And maybe one day, whether it's Nintendo or fans, will actually come back to Star Fox 1 and give it that beautiful glow up that it deserves to create a true modernized one-to-one -one remake with the SNES original for all the newer generations to play. But at least we have Star Fox the original to keep us company. All right, the next one I have for you is a bit short, but still pretty interesting. That game being Star Fox DS. Star Fox DS was being created for the DS. Now, for those who are avid Star Fox fans, you might be quick to point out that Star Fox DS was actually the beta title for Star Fox Command, and you would be right. Star Fox Command's original working title was Star Fox DS, and we did get to see Star Fox Command come out, as Star Fox Command became a full-blown strategy-based game, pulling tons of elements from Star Fox 2. However, this was not always the case, and that's where Star Fox DS, the original idea, comes into play. Star Fox DS was going to be a full-blown original Star Fox game on the DS, with standard controls in a full-blown on-rail style. Right at the start of development, Shigeru Miyamoto suggested that Q Games created a demo for Star Fox on the upcoming DS, and they went ahead and created a space elevator demo that played like the original Star Fox. Now, about a year ago, we actually got an entire documentary by NWR that went into the development history of Star Fox Command, where the original developers actually spoke on this. And during that, Dylan actually referenced the space elevator, talking about how it was pretty one-to-one -one with how Star Fox used to be, where the original envision of Star Fox DS was going to be an on-rail OG Star Fox game. They even revamped the look of the Star Fox characters and team. But sadly, this was completely dropped, and Star Fox Command began its development as the game we know it today. Now sadly, we don't even know what this demo could even look like, let alone what these new character designs or team designs even were. Were they predating the Command designs? Were it something brand new from what we saw from Command? Or was it similar? Though this might be personal preference talking, I would have loved to see an on-rails classic, true-to-form Star Fox game on the DS rather than what we got with Command. Command is good in its own right for sure, 
but it's just a dang shame we didn't get to see what Starbucks DS was originally going to be when it was first envisioned. And what's even crazier is that this demo still exists, and it's out there right now, probably in the deep vaults of Q Games. Oh yes, Starbucks DS is technically the beta of Starbucks Command. The ideas and the entire philosophy behind what Starbucks DS was originally going to be is so different, it kind of makes sense to count it as its own entire game that was totally cancelled in favor of Command. Be that as it may, it's conceivable that one day we will see this original demo of the Space Elevator gameplay, and it would be totally cool to see their original envisioning of Starbucks DS. And the best thing us Starbucks fans can really do is keep our fingers crossed that we'll get to see it one day. As we continue with this list, we're going to talk about another game that's beta was drastically different from what we got in the final game. That being the original Starbucks Adventures Dinosaur Planet. Starbucks Adventures, if you don't know what that is, it's one of my favorite games of all time, and a game that released by Rare on the Nintendo GameCube. Originally, this game was known as Dinosaur Planet, and it was on the N64. However, that game got completely changed into what we know now as Starbucks Adventures. Starbucks Dinosaur Planet was actually the in-between from Dinosaur Planet and Starbucks Adventures. You see, one of the main characters in the game was known as Saber. However, Miyamoto saw Saber and thought he looked a lot like Fox McCloud, and so Fox McCloud actually took the place of Saber. Because of this, a lot of the story elements were changed to fit into the Star Fox brand, with brand new characters being added, a part of the Star Fox lore, and more. The story that we had in the original Star Wars Adventures Dinosaur Planet was vastly different from what we got in the original. Thankfully, unlike a lot of the projects on this list, there is extensive documentation on Star Wars Adventures Dinosaur Planet. The ROMs that we have nowadays, and that's being worked on to be fully playable, are the transition period from Dinosaur Planet to Star Wars Adventures, where Fox McCloud was put in place of Saber. Suffice it to say that the game we were originally going to get is a far cry from what we actually got when Adventures fully released on GameCube. Which is why I'm calling it a cancelled game. Sure, it does suck that Star Fox Dinosaur Planet never got to be fully released as it was intended way back in the day, but thankfully we now have a way to play it practically in full, and we all are able to enjoy it and witness the history and the transition that it was. Heck, maybe one day Nintendo will actually go back, look at Star Fox Dinosaur Planet, and fully fix it up and port it or it release it for modern day play. Crazier things have happened. I mean, Starbucks 2 got a full-blown legitimate release. Why not this one? As we continue with this list, we're gonna start getting into the games that I knew nearly nothing about and were really obscure and hard to find. In fact, the next one is a double whammy. Star Fox 3DS slash Star Fox Legends. Now, before anyone calls me out, these are just concept titles for what these could have been, not official titles ever said by Nintendo. I just came up with the title names myself. So, here's how things worked out. Back when the 3DS was still around, they wanted to put a Star Fox game on it. The game that we ended up getting was Star Fox 64 3D, which all of us already know about. But that was not always the case, as it was originally planned to have an original Star Fox game on the 3DS, and two ideas were brought to mind. Either A, a complete sequel to Star Fox Command, or a prequel game featuring James McCloud in the original Star Fox team. Now, information on these is very, very sparse, and you can only really find mention of them here and there through various interviews. One of these interviews can actually be found on Nintendo's very own website, from Iwata Asks. During that interview, Miyamoto actually stated this. So, I wanted to make a game for the Nintendo 3DS system, but making a completely new Star Fox game like MNS on Wanted would take up to three years to complete. During another point in that interview, Awana also asked this. You kept telling Yamada-san to make a new Starbucks game, and the next thing you knew, the job had fallen to you. Though yes, these quotes are very, very minor, it shows that there was an idea, or at least a concept, of a brand new original title for the 3DS. Through various interviews, it came to light that there were two ideas for a 3DS game, being a prequel with James McCloud, or a brand new title that would sequel to Starbucks Command. Sadly, because of time constraints, neither of those were actually made, and we got Star Fox 64 3D instead. Though Nintendo has gone dark with the Star Fox franchise, maybe one day they can actually use one of these ideas as a jumping off point for creating a brand new title for the Star Fox franchise. And if they did that, it would truly be fantastic. Moving forward with another weird entry, this one being Star Fox Warriors. Koei Tecmo, the original people that created Hyrule Warriors, pitched a Star Fox game, but it was rejected. The game would have been mainly based around melee combat, with some space fighting dog sections, and a simplified combat system. But as of right now, there are no screenshots or footage that exists of this game, most likely as Nintendo probably rejected it during the original planning stages. And that's all she wrote! Now, you can look online and find tons of other sites kind of regurgitating the same bit of information, maybe with an extra bit here and there, but that's kind of the gist. 
Star Fox Warriors would have definitely been out there as far as Star Fox games go. In fact, it probably would have became a black sheep of the franchise. Nevertheless, it pains me to say that if a title like this would have been released or announced, it probably would have been met with a mixed reception and probably wouldn't have performed very well. I do wish that we could have at least seen a demo or a concept of what Star Fox Warriors could have played like, or at least looked like. It's definitely out there, but seeing Fox McCloud and his team get a far better combat system that was not only fine-tuned, but all around better rounded, would have been a really cool take. The probability of this game ever being made is very, very low. However, if Starbucks ever does become a full-blown household name, and it reaches a level of love and attention that other franchises like Zelda gets, then it's very possible that this concept could come back as a spin-off for Star Fox. The likelihood of that actually happening is pretty low, however, it would still be cool to see. We are approaching the end of this list, however, things only get more interesting from here. The next title I have for you is Starbucks Adventures 64. Yes, you heard that right, Starbucks Adventures 64. And no, I'm not talking about Starbucks Adventures Dinosaur Planet, I'm talking about a full-blown game titled Starbucks Adventures that was going to be its own entire thing on the N64 that was going to be a direct sequel to Star Fox 64. I shit you not! This version of Star Fox Adventures was going to be a direct sequel to Star Fox 64, where Star Fox is going to be out of the cockpit and mainly on foot. A lot of the information on this actually comes from an interview that was conducted a while back. In fact, a lot of the information comes from the mouth of the one and only, and I'm sorry I'm going to butcher the name here, Imuara. He actually stated a few things, for example, that the original idea and concept was to set an 8 year time skip after the events of Starbucks 64. In fact, here's one of his direct quotes. Something where Fox runs around on foot, taking out enemies with his gun, but shooting games with the character displayed with that behind the back perspective can be tough to play, can't they? You can't always see the enemies because the player's character is blocking your view. I was aware of these issues, but I really wanted to realize Fox fighting with a gun. So I continued pondering the directions for the game to take. In the N64 game, there were those stages with the Landmaster, the tank, where the camera automates itself and enemies pour into the from the sky, right? I really love those sections. It feels great to take down all those enemies from below. So I was trying to build on the sensation and create something where you'd get to mow down tons of enemies. I was thinking of a justification for why those four characters might reunite to fight the enemy. And I figured that after eight years, a few things had to have changed. After all that time, Peppy might be too old to still be piloting a fighter, obviously stuff like that. The game system's different, and the relationship between characters has also evolved, so 8 years seemed like a nice, neat window of time. As the story continues, it turns out that around the same time Dinosaur Planet was also being made for the N64, but it was extremely late into its life cycle. And staff from the Star Fox Adventures project was also being pulled to work on titles such as Zelda and Mario. So the idea came to merge both titles together to create the Star Fox Adventures that we all know today. What's really interesting is that this type of gameplay actually ended up coming to fruition way later down the road with Star Fox Assault, where we did get full-blown on-foot combat, where you got to mow down tons of enemies with an array of weapons. And it's not too far off the realm of possibility that the ideas of Assault's combat might have came from the original ideas and concepts of Star Fox Adventure 64. It's super crazy to think that we had two separate games Dinosaur Planet and Adventure 64 that were brought together to create one massive game which is going to be Star Fox Adventures Dinosaur Planet which changed again to create a whole nother game being Star Fox Adventures. What the fuck? It just goes to show that Star Fox Adventures has a very crazy history with its creation being related to three past cancelled games and that is just wild to think about. As we approach the end of this list, this is definitely one of the weirdest things I have ever stumbled across, that game being Star Fox X Metroid Fusion Saga. This is a very weird title, as Star Fox Fusion Saga was going to be a full crossover between Star Fox and Metroid. Way back in 2012, during the Wii U, there was a rumor that was floating around about a fusion between Star Fox and Metroid. The project story goes as follows. During an intergalactic warp, Fox and his crew crash into Samus Aran's ship. Samus is sent crashing into an unknown planet below. Missions then unfold as Fox attempts to find Samus while she explores the world around her. Eventually, the two Nintendo icons meet to confront Fox's villain Andros, who is attempting to harness the power of the symbiotic Metroid creatures. True to each franchise, the Star Fox segments would have been just like all the other Star Fox games are, being high action, high energy, third person, air and land based combat. However, in contrast, the Metroid portions were more isolated, lonely, and based on that first person perspective introduced in Metroid Prime. 
Now this rumor did end up getting confirmation later down the road, where it turned out that this was a proposed idea some time ago, but it was shot down by Nintendo. And I can't say I blame them for this one. Having two not all that successful IPs trying to combine into one massive game, though for fans might have been a really cool experience, it most likely would have never performed well at all. Not to mention, it probably would have been a massive clash to flip from high-octane R-Wing combat to isolated Metroid Prime gameplay. And it probably would have started to feel like that you were playing two massively different games that were being mishmashed between both of them. Not to mention the style of Star Fox and the style of Metroid are also two drastically different styles, and trying to combine them probably would have looked really off-putting. I think a better concept might have been having Samus Aran and her gunship fighting alongside of Fox McCloud and his team. And in that case, Andros could be bioengineering Metroids into bosses and enemies, which then would probably have to force Fox McCloud and his team to adapt by maybe adding ice beams to all their ships, which in that case is a pretty cool idea, where we would have had an ice R-Wing variant that could take down and attack Metroids slash Metroid-based weaponry and ships. And having Samus fly alongside them would have been a real sight to see. Or in contrast, maybe have Samus Aran and the Fox team do mainly on foot missions. And that could open the door to something like Fox McCloud having his own suit similar to Samus so he could combat Metroids on foot. Or they could combine both and create a game somewhat similar to Star Wars Assault where you had space and ground combat. In that vein, the concept of Fox McCloud joining Samus Aran makes total sense. But the original pitch for Star Fox X Metroid Fusion Saga, that's one that I honestly don't see work in modern day. We have finally reached the end of our list, and we've talked a lot about cancelled games. However, Star Fox has not only had cancelled games, but cancelled projects. First, I want to talk about the cancelled R-Wing Amiibo. Around the time of Star Fox Zero, Nintendo was actually trying to create an R-Wing Amiibo. The idea was to take the R-Wing Amiibo and be able to move it to transform it into its walker state that was shown in Star Fox Zero. In fact, a direct quote from Miyamoto states this, There was one point where we had an R-Wing Amiibo that would transform into a walker, but it was really tough to execute that in normal Amiibo size, and in a way that met with product safety standards. What's even crazier is that they actually created several prototypes of that very Amiibo, and that's floating around in Nintendo when we've never even got to see it! Now, Amiibos weren't the only thing that got canned. Way back in the day, Nintendo was actually working alongside Netflix back when it was far more prevalent, with creating shows related to Zelda and Star Fox. This was going to lead to Star Fox the Animated Series, and it was going to be in a very similar style to Fantastic Mr. Fox. And funny enough, we actually have a look at what this could have been like with a video on YouTube known as Fantastic Mr. Star Fox. However, this never came to be, as Netflix actually ended up leaking information on the Legend of Zelda series, and because of that, Nintendo pulled out of the deal with Netflix, and so, the Star Fox Animated Series was cancelled. But all is not lost, as again, fans came in for the win with a series called A Fox in Space. A series being created by Matthew Gofford, and honestly, this is what Star Fox the Animated Series needs to be like. And though we might never have actually gotten a Nintendo official Star Fox the Animated Series, Honestly, A Fox in Space is a far better animated adaptation than we possibly would have ever gotten from Nintendo. And finally, the last item in the list, Star Fox The Motion Picture. Now, yes, this one's technically not a cancelled project, and this video very well might age very, very poorly because of this entry, but way back in the day, there were some really cool concepts of creating a more realistic look of all the Fox characters. And this piqued the interest of the writer of Rogue One, who wanted to make a Star Fox movie. All he ever said was, I want to write this animated movie, and along that post was showcasing Croft's amazing artwork of the Star Fox crew in a far more realistic style. And that's actually it. And funny enough, this actually ended up breaking news on several sites, and people got genuinely excited. In fact, I got excited myself back in the day when I created an entire video talking about the idea of a Star Fox movie. Now, the reason this entry probably is not going to age well after this point is that Miyamoto has already expressed interest in creating more Nintendo movie titles since the success of the Super Mario Bros. movie. Hell, Star Wars actually got a bit of recognition in the Mario movie, where it showcased a brand new model of the R-Wing on top of Mario's TV. Now, yes, you can be mad, this is technically not a cancelled game, or a cancelled project, but it's still really cool that way back when, there was actual interest from a full-blown writer of Star Wars to create and write a script for a Star Fox movie. 
And that finally brings us to the end of part two of our list. It's crazy to see how many projects Star Fox actually has had canceled over the years. And seeing them all together, it's just mind blowing. There have been many concepts all over the years for all these ideas of Fox McCloud and his team. And that means there are ample ideas for Nintendo to pull from to create brand new Star Fox experiences. And who knows, Nintendo might even have more canceled projects and ideas for Star Fox that are locked away behind their Nintendo vaults. And if those ever do come to light, you can be as sure as butters on toast that I will be there to check them out and showcase them in a part three. But as it stands, that finally brings us to the end of our list, at least for now. And of course, if you want to learn more about all of these projects, information that I found, or if you want to back check me, they will be down in the description for you to check out. And that finally brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you all learned something new, and if there's a project I missed, let me know in the comments below, because I love hearing about Star Fox history and lost concepts. It's so cool to talk about, at least for me. Without further ado, this is Jarsic signing out. Don't forget to rock and roll, and I'll see you next time. Later!